Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this motion on a ramp problem, they tell us that a car traveling at 30 meters per second runs out of gas while traveling up a five degree slope. We need to find out how far it'll coast before rolling back down. So let's draw our ramp here. They tell us it's five degrees, there's five, and we have our car, there's our car and we need to find out how far it'll coast. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use a tilted coordinate grid, meaning that this slope right here is our X axis, and then this will be our Y axis, so it's not at a true vertical horizontal, it's shifted relative to the slope. Now if you remember, gravity is always pointing straight down, so we have negative G, so what we need to do is we need to break up G into its X and Y components. And this is where the tilted coordinate grid really shines. Because if we have this part right here is the X component or the negative acceleration in the X direction, negative A sub X. And then this will be our negative acceleration in the Y component. The force that's acting on the car to slow it down is this right here. So that's the value that we need. This now, because of the tilted coordinate grid, is 90 degrees. And if you remember back in your math problems when you would do the parallel lines with a, a diagonal line going through them, and these two are the same, and these ones are the same, and these are the same as these, and etc. This is the principle that we're using here. So this degree right here is five degrees. If that confuses you, you should spend some time and think about how this and this is the exact same. It comes up a lot, especially on ramp problems. You can just accept the fact that, hey, these are the exact same and just go with it. But I like to understand why and that confidence will help you out on other problems. So now that we know that this is the angle, it's the opposite of the angle for the acceleration in the negative x direction. And g in this triangle right here is our hypotenuse. So we'll be doing sine of the angle, we'll call it theta, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And we're trying to solve for the opposite, which is this. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by h. So opposite is equal to h sine theta. And we can change our variables to represent negative a sub x because we said that is the opposite. h is g, and we want sine of the angle. Whoops, I said h right here. That is theta, not h. Okay, there we go. That's fixed. Since our acceleration needs to be negative because we're going in the negative x direction, our gravity right here should also be negative. It's important to understand when G should be negative and when it should be positive and not just automatically always putting in a negative for G. G is 9.8 and we often put negative because it's going in the negative Y direction. Here it's also going in the negative X direction for this component, so that's why we have negative G there. So negative A sub X. Actually, let me, I don't want this to be confusing. I put negative here just to say that it needs to be negative, but I just want it to say acceleration. And then we have negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of the angle five degrees. So negative 9.8 times the sine of five gives us negative 0.854. So we have negative 0.854, and that is going to be meters per second squared. So now that we have the acceleration, now we can use a kinematic equation to figure out at what point it will stop. So the equation that we'll be using is the only kinematic equation that doesn't have time as a component to it, and that is V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A times delta X. What we're trying to solve for is the delta X, and the final velocity is zero. By setting that to zero, that will give us the point where the car stops and starts to roll back down. Let's subtract while we're at it, V initial squared over. So we have negative V velocity initial squared is equal to two A times the delta X. Now we'll divide both sides of the equation by two times A, two A. So we have 
delta x is equal to the negative initial velocity squared divided by two times the acceleration. The initial velocity is 30 meters per second. So we have 30 meters per second. That will be squared. Don't let that confuse you. It's not squared over the units. And it's divided by two times the acceleration. Acceleration is what we found right here. So the negative 0 0.854 meters per second squared. So we have a negative 30 squared divided by two times a negative 0 0.854, not 824, sorry, that's 854. So we have 526, let's round that to two significant figures. So that will give us 530 meters for how far the car will go before it stops and starts to roll back down the hill.